Welcome to Best Practices, the Flipped Classroom Model. So let's begin by taking a trip down memory lane. So back 30 some years ago, th when I was going to vocational school, this was the technology of the day that uh, I was being prepared to work on. And uh, back then, the program hours at most uh, colleges and tech schools was probably around 1,080 hours, maybe less. Um, but uh, you know the vehicles at the time obviously didn't have uh, uh, didn't have CAN bus operating systems. This car didn't have ABS, um, didn't have dual zone climate control. Uh, you didn't need a lab scope to diagnose a misfire. You just needed short uh, six short pieces of vacuum hose and a test light uh, to short out the the coil towers. And oftentimes it was just. Uh, carbon track plugs or it needed a new coil. You could actually see the battery on this thing and service it easily. Um, you could just do just about anything on this car in about two hours or less. And uh, you look at today's vehicles, however, um, well now we got you know electric vehicles and uh, we just can't ignore this any longer. So um, you know the program hours haven't changed all that much. So a typical mast automotive program is 1200 hours and um, so not only do we have to deal with a more you know increasingly complex automobile with an ice engine now we got electric drive that's thrown into the mix here so um, that's quite a hurdle to to overcome in in 1200 hours and then we have you know the students coming into the program having far less experience with the hands-on than maybe students did some 30 years ago. Um, you know, I grew up on a farm. We had a lot of old equipment. So I uh, learned the value of WD-40 in a breakover bar at a pretty young age. But uh, a lot of the students that are in your programs today coming in, you know, they didn't grow up helping dad fix the car or the lawnmower. Um, probably the first time they've they've held a wrench in their hand many times is is in in your program out there in the shop so we've got 1200 hours to train today's students that have far less experience than they had years ago something has to give and then we have the the uh the gap between learning theory and working on a live automobile um, you know learning the theory is difficult enough but then trans transferring that that knowledge and that information to to working on a on a car is is often difficult uh, just that that transition from classroom to working in the lab um, for example looking at a wiring diagram and and studying it and maybe even mapping it out and then going out into the lab then or on a car and, um, and and looking at a harness that's all wrapped up that can become pretty abstract for the students and if you think about electric vehicles electric drive a lot of that technology is pretty abstract as well so so there's kind of our, our three challenges um, you know technology uh, student um, experience uh, the gap between theory and and live work uh, what are we going to do how, how do we how do we uh, provide the industry with uh, students who are employable um, when they need m more time than ever out there in the lab just practicing. So, well, um, let me ask you this question here. Where, where do you feel that you're the most valuable? Um, is it beyond, all, Obviously, all these things are important, but where are you the most value valuable to your students? Is it uh, behind your desk preparing lesson plans and PowerPoints? Is it you know behind the podium, up in front of your class lecturing, or is it in the shop, you know, showing them the value of WD-40 and a breakover bar, how to position your body for leverage? If you've ever had a student that couldn't break loose a bolt, and and you come up over there and you you know and it's and you grab the right tools and you you show them how to do it, and they say, oh, you have old man strength. Have you ever had ever have you ever had students tell you? You have old man strength. I, 
um, it's uh, just that experience factor and that we know how to position our bodies for leverage. So today's students need more time than ever out there in the lab. And, uh, you know, at Electude, I work for an automotive e-learning company, but we all firmly believe that the, that uh, Electude is not designed to replace what you do with your students out in the lab it's rather designed to replace some of that classroom work so you can spend more time with your students out in the lab. So let's talk for just a moment about this flipped classroom model. Um, typically uh, this is going to be where students are doing a majority of their theory work from home um, and somewhat self-paced and of course Electude was uh, designed with the flipped classroom model in, in mind where students can do uh, you know lesson modules from home and then when they come to the training center you the teacher can can review that work can take them a little bit deeper maybe have a discussion based on their performance in the lessons and um, and then we can get students out in the lab a little quicker spend more less time in the classroom more time with students out in the lab. Um, the flipped classroom model can also kind of help improve student engagement and you might think to yourself well how does doing homework, uh, doing theory work from home increase engagement? Uh, it's it's uh, that when you're there at the training center and you're more involved with active discussion and uh, maybe activities that are in the in the classroom that are um, that provide a transition, trans, I'll call it transitional learning, between the, the theory that they do at home and the uh, hands-on out in the lab. There's some things that we can do in the classroom to help students transfer that knowledge from, from learning theory uh, to out in the shop. And we'll, we'll cover a few of those things here today a little later on. So I often uh, think of when I'm thinking about the flipped classroom model, I kind of think of it as three pillars, and uh, that's you know the learning theory, learning of the theory, uh, the practical application out in the lab, and then probably the most important uh, perhaps is that what you do the transitional learning, the teacher facilitated activities that uh, can be done either in the classroom or in the shop to to bridge that gap between. Uh, the theory and the practical application. Um, and we'll start here, we're just going to talk about some of the theory you know on this slide before we we go to the transitional and uh, show you maybe a little bit how Electude can help you with some of this. Uh, so the so the theory obviously includes uh, reading videos, uh, you know our online lessons, assessments, quizzes. Let's take a look here just real briefly at uh, Electude's uh, companion guide. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Electude's companion guide, it is uh, a part of our new uh, classroom and Automotive Essentials Plus uh, products. And so students, in addition now to the e-learning lessons, have a nice digital companion guide. And I often suggest that students start here before they go through the online lessons. Uh, that they familiarize themselves a little bit about what they're going to be learning about. So this is not the main um, learning material. We call this a companion guide. It's a, it's a supplement, uh, supplementing the online lessons. And it gives students a nice reading experience so things are, are laid out a little bit different. But they can kind of familiarize themselves with the parts and pieces um, before they go into the lessons and uh, this will naturally help them perform better uh, in the lessons if the material is new to them. And they can kind of scroll through this and, and read about the various topics or they can jump to a particular topic here in the left hand menu so that's kind of a nice feature uh, of this companion guide. So there's, uh, there's just one little aspect there uh, and uh, that's just in uh, this companion guide is a feature that's included right along uh, that run beside the interactive lessons there. And then we also have these new how-to videos. This is also a feature of uh, the Electude Classroom product. 
And uh, if you've been an Electude user for some time, you're probably familiar with this, that uh, our, our e-learning lessons primarily deal with the theory and not so much the how-to. And uh, so now, uh, with the addition of these how-to videos that either uh, illustrate a repair or diagnostic procedure, students can be reviewing these from home before they come to the training center. And um, this is, or maybe they miss it. Maybe they miss a day when, when after you did a demonstration, or during you know, they miss the day you did the demonstration, and they can watch this uh, how-to video uh, to help prepare them before they go out in the lab and do it for themselves. So uh, what's nice about these is you've got a really nice high-quality video here. And instead of watching a r lengthy video from beginning to end, we have a, a short little video snippet. This one here is 51 seconds long. Uh, they answer a question or two, and then they move on to the next page, and there'll be another sh short little video. Um, and as they progress through these questions, often the video will change. Or as a teacher, maybe you, you, uh, you have the option where you can uh, you know, play these in the classroom as well. Uh, which is kind of a nice, nice thing. Uh, you can go full screen with these. There is no voiceover with these videos. It's all designed uh, to be narrated by the teacher if you should show these in class, but we do have the closed caption here, so that's kind of a nice added feature. So those are our how-to videos, um, where obviously you could use probably uh, YouTube and, and things like that, but... Uh, it's nice to have access to some videos. Uh, online uh, lessons, of course, that's the key key piece of Electude, the, 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 the online theory lessons that, and simulations that students can work on from home. And of course, a part of uh, your learning theory is being assessed. And so at Electude, we have the quizzes, um, tests, and then uh, Kahoot. If you've, uh, if you've never used Kahoot, it is a real hoot. It's kind of a fun way to uh, assess students um, where they use their cell phones as kind of a response device. So um, those are just some kind of fun things that you can do in the learning of theory. So let's, uh, let's go on here and let's uh, go to our next slide and we'll talk about some transitional and practical hands-on. So some other things that you can do, you know, as far as in the classroom, um, some things that maybe I did uh, as, a, as a teacher years ago. Um, if you've ever uh, um, did the, uh, the mapping of um, wiring diagrams, the color coding, um, I learned a lot of this from, uh, um, there's a George Minchu. Some of you probably know George from AES Wave. He's got a great uh, training program on color coding of wiring diagrams. Um, I think this is a, a great example of, of transitional learning, something that you can, a meaningful activity that doesn't involve lecture but gets students involved. Uh, you might even call a student up in, uh, in front of the class and have them explain, um, map out a wiring diagram and explain how that circuit works. Maybe you give uh, team students up in groups and have them each prepare a mini mini lesson on uh, on a wiring diagram. Obviously, there's lots of experiments that you can do with uh, with with trainers. I think trainers uh, help the use of training boards can uh, help bridge that gap between learning theory and uh, oftentimes the as, as the abstract part of working on vehicles in the lab. Um, and then, of course, the Electude uh, lessons uh, that you can put in presentation mode. You might even call a student up in front of the, in front of the class and have them, for example, uh, connect uh, uh, these light bulbs here to the relay. So I think in the classroom, uh, what's, and this is often uh, you know, a lot of fun as well, instead of being a, uh, a, a lecturer primarily, you become more what I call a facilitator. And, uh, and as far as using the Electude lessons, the homework, uh, as a base for your discussion, let me sh if you haven't seen 
the Electude Response Analysis feature. This is probably one of the best tools that we have to facilitate uh, discussion when students are, are in the classroom with you. So I have some sample data here. These are not real students. This is just some, some sample data that I put together. Um, but uh, we've got a lesson here, AC-DC voltage. And let's say that these students here um, were assigned to do that work from home the night before. And of course, I can see, I can glean a little information here. Um, I can see that some students did really well, others struggled. But from this screen here, I can't really see, I uh, can't tell, like, is there any common areas where, where all the students are struggling? I can obviously click on a student name and I can see their individual results and responses, but this, is, this would be very time consuming to do this for each student. So let me show you this really neat feature response analysis. It's kind of the, one of the best, best secrets in Electude. If you don't scroll uh, to the bottom here, you maybe never even see this, but you can generate a report and it's basically gonna, basically gonna crunch all this data here and show you question by question where are students struggling the most and of course the length of these bars just kind of gives you an indicator of you know of uh, um, the number of responses and things like that so here we had 24 responses and uh, only five correct so definitely this would be some this would be one i'd want to review this one here would be another one to review basically where you see a lot of red is probably um, you know where where you want to spend a little bit of time reviewing with your class. Now there's no sense in uh, reviewing these questions here because everybody got that right. But let's jump down here to this one, and here's your this is your hot link. That'll this will take you right to the question. And now you have something you can um, talk about in the classroom. So this particular question showing uh, shows a uh, turning magnet. Press the stop button when the voltage is the most positive. Here again, you might you might even call a student up in front of the class here. Um, you could put this into presentation mode. And now this is going to be our, our discussion topic for you know, in the next few minutes and we can talk about we can freeze that at the most positive voltage and talk about the zero line and positive voltage and negative voltage. Um, but we can also you know manipulate these bars here and uh, talk about um, what influences AC voltage, you know, the strength of the magnet, uh, the rotational frequency, etc. You know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, uh, how many words is a interactive animation worth? So this is a, a great tool to use to increase um, training efficiency in the classroom. Uh, putting it into presentation mode and then you simply just go back here to group results and you can pick another question to review next but um, but you can use the results from the lessons that students are doing from home to kind of fine-tune your follow-up instruction and maybe some of the activities that you might do in the classroom with with trainer boards or or an activity out in the lab um, but um, it's a it's a great springboard into taking the students you know a little deeper so um, a great tool um, some other things you can do of course um, yeah um, I think these are three good examples we'll get into some other areas here about uh, um, I call it uh, you know personal technology we'll talk about that here in a bit but uh, this is a great start here, and it, and uh, once once you kind of get familiar with this and you start doing these things, you'll kind of slowly turn into more of a facilitator than uh, the uh, the teacher that's that's in front of the class lecturing. And uh, I think this is a much more fun way to teach, and it helps keep students engaged as well. So let's talk about some of the training technology that, that's uh, the out there that's getting a lot of uh, publicity. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about virtual reality. And uh, so here, 
Here I have uh, an example here of uh, virtual reality. We'll just kind of play this little short video. And uh, so here you see a gentleman here. He's got the goggles on and uh, looks like he's uh, manipulating uh, a shifter here. And there is a place for this type of technology. I think it's, it's really cool. I think students are really... Uh, get interested in this. This is actually was taken at Electude headquarters. We were uh, Electude's always experimenting and, lo and uh, looking for uh, where um, you know what the next best thing is and uh, exploring the possibilities. So this is kind of a model that was created by Electude designers uh, in a kind of experimenting. But what they noticed with this uh, pretty early on is well, how many how many people are we training right now? And the answer is just one person. So uh, although this technology is wonderful, and, and if, if you're a school that has this technology, good for you. It's just another you know tool in the box to help train students. But it's one of those things that, that students are going to rotate through. Maybe you have certain students that are working on training boards, other students that are in the lab working on cars, and then you might have one or two students that are working on on a VR device like this. So I'm not saying that this is not good technology, but um, this, this is, this is a, a, a great technology, and I think if you have it, wonderful. But it's not going to help you train a class of, of 25 students uh, at the same time, or and students can't really you know, take this home with them and, and learn with it. So I look at this as more of a of a uh, rotational training device to be used at the training center to be mixed in while some students are maybe working in the lab other students can maybe be doing some virtual things but uh, there's no way that this is ever going to replace what we do hands-on and I know some administrators out there that would love to to see more of this and say oh we can we don't have to have a shop we can we can do this all virtual well, no, you just can't replace the feel of working on a real car. Uh, for example, back probing a uh, uh, electrical connector or uh, uh, torquing down a head bolt. There's just no way to replicate that uh, using uh, this sort of technology. So, what about uh, what kind of technology is this? I'll play the video here and uh, uh, tell me what kind of technology this is. We might play this a couple times through, but here we have a, here again a person with some goggles on, and uh, uh, that person is not crazy. They're actually manipulating uh, what they're seeing in front of their viewer there. They're seeing an image um, on the screen, and they're actually operating a menu. Uh, and so what this person sees in front of them is an engine, and they're... Uh, uh, making the engine larger, smaller, spinning it, and uh, it's kind of a, a, it's an interesting technology. But here again, how many students are we training at, at this point? It's still still just one. Um, so I, I, uh, I appreciate this technology. I think that it's, it's got opportunities for the future, um, but the cost and then how many students that we can train at one time is is somewhat limited. However, with the Electude simulator, you can t they can uh, you know open up the simulator from home and they can go through. Uh, there's over 50 different uh, customizable experiments that you can give your students, or you can take a whole class to a computer lab and they can work on this virtual car and no headsets are needed just a simple laptop and internet connection so although at Electude we are exploring some of these other avenues at this point in time we really feel that uh, um, the uh, interactive lessons simulations that students do on a regular computer with internet connection is is probably the the best learning tool uh, to train a whole class of students to, to, to be the most efficient so that you can get your students from the classroom into the shop as quickly as possible. 
and they can practice these diagnostic skills from home so and without any expensive equipment now let's take a uh, talk just for a moment about uh, personal technology and this is one of the things I picked up uh, going to a non automotive conference so if you're a if you're a new teacher um, and uh, or you're new to teaching I say go to as many conferences about teaching and learning styles that you can because you're gonna pick something up that you can immediately apply to your automotive training automotive or diesel training program so this is something that I kinda of picked up going to one of those types of conferences when I was t when I was a teacher and uh, the speaker was talking about personal technology and uh, for example he used uh, the speaker used a cell phone for example if you, if you want to know how your how your phone works you know just ask your teenager because they know everything about how that phone works and it's because it's theirs it belongs to them they have a an interest in learning about how that phone works because it's it's personal it's theirs and uh, they they want to learn how it works so they can use it so I was thinking about that and think well how um, how can we apply that then to uh, motivating students to learn in the classroom and um, there's a lot of these little personal diagnostic devices that are relatively inexpensive if you're at a college for example you could uh, even put this like on a, uh, like a course fee that would uh, uh, students would pay for that but these little uh, simple little one channel lab scopes I think they're under under two hundred dollars and you could have you a, a one channel scope uh, these little scan tools are even cheaper and they even have them uh, Bluetooth now or that they can even use their their cell, cell phones as the uh, uh, for the display so uh, but but that's an example of, of personal technology and uh, uh, this is very similar to the ones that that uh, that uh, I used uh, when in when students would take engine performance one class they there was a little course fee that paid for a little uh, simple little uh, fifty dollar uh, scan tool and oh boy when they got that tool the first day of class what did they want to do they wanted to get out in the shop immediately hook that thing up to their cars or anything that moved out there and figure out how that scan tool worked and um, it was just a uh, a great uh, feeling to know that uh, here you know these students are engaged and they're learning about readiness status and monitors and things like that and it wasn't that I was up there in front of the class teaching they were figuring these things out uh, looking things up on the on the computer uh, on their own because that scan tool was going to go home with them or they were going to bring it to class each day and use it it became personal technology it wasn't something that they were just using that belonged to the school so it's a great great way I think to engage students and then something that they can take with them on the job site that they can use every day along those same lines personal technology I was thinking about meter usage and uh, uh, so at the time these little kits were around fifteen dollars a piece I think they're about double that now if you can find them seems like after COVID everything's gotten more expensive but nonetheless uh, these are still you can find these online um, so so uh, here again this was an electrical one course where uh, students would uh, purchase a little meter kit and I kind of made this part of the soldering um, unit so we first started soldering just making some jumper wires but uh, uh, but then they they uh, soldered and put together their own meter and then of course once they got this meter together what did they want to do well they wanted to learn how that meter works because it wasn't just a meter belonging to the school that meter became personal technology it was theirs and they wanted to learn how that tool worked and it's kind of kind of interesting as well when this when you get this kit not only is there instructions on how to put this thing together which uh, also is kind of a skill for students just reading and applying information but there's some lessons in there about Ohm's law and things like that and basic 
um, you know, uh, uh, re resistors and diodes and things like that. If you should decide to do something like this, just from my own experience, um, buy a couple extra kits just for spare parts because students will lose these little ball bearings that go underneath the rotary dial. They'll, they'll bounce on the floor and you won't find one or two. Um, the other thing, whatever this stuff is that comes in the kit that, that looks like solder, uh, throw it away. Just, it doesn't, I don't know what it's, it's just really cheap solder. Um, you know, go get you some low temp solder from a parts store. Um, and then as far as actually soldering these to the circuit board, um, you'll probably want to get some really high quality, uh, soldering irons. Uh, I like the ones that have the, uh, the rotary dial, uh, that have the little wet sponge that you can wipe off. Um, but, um, students really didn't have too much trouble soldering these components on. Um, I did have one student that soldered all the components to the wrong side of the board and then they couldn't fit the rotary board or the rotary dial but but uh, overall uh, a great learning experience and and uh, of course it did take a couple days of class I think it probably took three days of class for them to put this together some students had to stay a little late to get theirs done but um, a really fun experience one of the one of the funnest things that uh, uh, lessons that uh, that I did in electrical one course. Now let's thought, let's also think about this for a moment. Um, I know there's a lot of programs right now that are designing standalone you know electric vehicle courses. Uh, typically, these are second year courses that are uh, more advanced in nature, and I think that is awesome. If I'm, I think for any school that that teaches electric vehicles as a standalone course that's wonderful uh, but if you're if you're if you're thinking about introducing electric drive but maybe you're not ready to design your own course um, what if we thought for just a moment that maybe a standalone electric drive course maybe isn't necessary for some schools could we just make it a part of all your courses for example, when you're when you're talking about about tires, um, you also mentioned that well, electric vehicles, um, you know, use low rolling resistance tires, and sometimes they're even filled with foam and things like that. Uh, lubrication when you're discussing lubrication and cooling, you know, with a conventional automobile, at the same time, um, you you talk about the uh, the cooling system. In an electric vehicle and uh, what types of coolants to use etc when you're um, in your electrical course and you're talking about starter motors that's a good time also to introduce students to three-phase motors that are in that are found in electric vehicles um, batteries charging systems etc because if you think about the future uh, let's say 10 years from now the vehicles that are going to be rolling into your automotive lab one one's going to be an, an ice vehicle the next one's going to be electric so what most of these students are going to be working on at least early in their career they're going to be working on ice vehicles and electric vehicles simultaneously flip going back and forth from one to the other and uh, working on each uh, the same day so why not do this in our training programs today where um, you know it's not something to be scared of or avoid but let's just start implementing electric electrification in all the courses that we teach where it applies and therefore we're making our our training program a little bit more efficient and students aren't scared of electric drive uh, and they're they're going to be exposed to it and then when they do go to the dealership or wherever um, they're going to have that background and uh, the knowledge base um, for the for the factory training to take them even deeper. So just uh, something to think about. Um, if you if you haven't designed an electric car course, or even if you have, maybe in all your courses, this is where you introduce students to to that technology. Also, I think um, you know obviously if you're a mast training program. 
I don't have to tell you this, but, uh, you know, there's over 300, I think there's, what, 380, almost 390 tasks. So if you take that 1,200 training hours, and if you're going to do all the, the mass tasks, that only really equates to about, you can only spend about three hours on each task. And I think we would all agree that, you know, three hours is probably not enough time to make any student a master of anything. So... I, I think too, um, I think our primary goal is to make students employable. And uh, if you think about those first couple year, couple two years that they're going to be, um, you know, young technicians working in the industry, uh, they're probably not going to be doing a lot of CAN bus diagnostics that first year on the job. But lubrication and maintenance, tires, brakes, uh, those are all important things, and uh, I can remember my very first day on the job. I was uh, uh, back in 1991. There, uh, I had to use the uh, Amco brake lathe, and uh, I had to be reminded by our uh, team leader uh, that hey, I needed help setting up that brake lathe because it had been like you know six six months. We did that on the beginning of the school year, and it had been six months since I've used that brake lathe. And, and, uh, but if you think about, you know, what students are going to be working on when they, when they leave your school, it's a lot of these things here. And I think these are the things that, that we need to have students practice, practice, practice throughout the whole year, not just, uh, uh, first semester of their first year. The, these things need to be repeated. Uh, whether that's a live shop class where they're, where they're, uh, uh working, uh, in the lab doing various things throughout their entire training program or they're, they're uh, in an internship. But something, these these skills here need to be repeated um, throughout their entire training program so that when they do go to the dealership or the shop, they're experts at lubrication and maintenance. Um, um, you know, on ca- the on-car brake lathe. In regard to gaskets and sealants, you know, what 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 sealants to use for what application, um, you know, how to replace struts and shocks, uh, tune-ups, when to use, when to use, uh, um, um, you know, lubricate the threads on the plug with anti-seize and when not to. And then a strong um, understanding of voltage drop and diagnostic strategy. That's probably one of the most critical things is is um, is a diagnostic strategy that that we develop in our students a process of you know verifying the concern uh, checking service history service bulletins and in if you think about this whether it's a a mechanical problem electrical problem uh, you know performance problem whatever we typically follow that same diagnostic strategy and if we can train students to to follow a certain procedure when they're doing doing early checks, visual inspections, um, research, road testing, etc., I think we're setting our students up for success long term. And so, uh, although you know, obviously those three hundred some ASC tasks are important, I think these areas here are the most because that's where. Uh, these students are going to be spending a lot of their time, and if they're confident in doing these few things, I think they're they're going to be more employable and more apt to go out there and, and go do it for a living. You know, we have of course a huge shortage of uh, technicians out there, but I think a lot of that has to do with just student confidence. They don't have the confidence to go do it because they haven't practiced it enough. So, um, so at Electude, yes, uh, we, we sell an e-learning product, but uh, we believe that that is uh, only to make your training time more efficient so you can get students out in the lab a little quicker and out there a little longer. So they need the hands-on, and I think the, this is a, a good place to kind of focus a lot of that. Now I kind of save this slide for last, uh, and this is a little bit of a, a look into the future. So first quarter of 2024, Electude is bringing in hardware, 
And this is uh, kind of the, you know, the third pillar. This is for that transitional learning. Uh, our hardware choices, these are all going to be powered by Electude software. So um, these boards are uh, very well designed, very well laid out. Uh, if you look here, even on this, uh, this is our uh, circuit diagnostic trainer. It's got six selectable faults. Uh, we use a cascade wiring diagram like what you're, you're going to see uh, in by a lot of the manufacturers. Uh, and students are going to learn on these trainers uh, going through uh, lessons. And uh, it's just a wonderful experience where they can, uh, and it really kind of complements the, the blended uh, flip classroom model. So where students, when they're home, they're working in electude theory lessons, watching how-to videos, that sort of thing. When they come to the training center, they're, they're uh, having discussions with you, the teacher, uh, over, over uh, the lesson activities, and then you have these transitional learning activities that you can e either, you know, buy a, buy a number of these trainers and train all your class in, in parallel at the same time. And there's other trainers like this, the, uh, the electric drive trainer, where uh, where it's more of a rotational trainer. So we're going to start by releasing, I think, up to nine or ten training devices. This is just a, a preview of those. You're going to be be learning more and more about these in the coming months, but we are at Electute are extremely excited uh, about this opportunity to bring uh, training devices to teachers here in the U.S. So... Uh, so my last slide here, of course, you might recognize some of these folks here on the screen, but um, if you think about what's uh, common about all these people here is they weren't afraid to to take a chance and, and do something new that maybe hasn't been done before. So as, as you're out there, um, you know, like I said, go to as many different conferences and things that you can, learn from other individuals, network, talk with other teachers, and don't be afraid to go outside the box a little bit, um, you know, and, and do something new and exciting in your automotive program to either engage students uh, or figure out ways to, to get them out in the lab, whether that's uh, in working in the shop or doing internship. Maybe you, maybe you bring in special speakers like this who would talk to your class to motivate them. But... Uh, but whatever you do, just uh, have fun and get, help um, be that facilitator in the classroom. So uh, I hope uh, this short little presentation gave you just a few ideas. Um, but uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.